Here's an interview from one of our past shows on Rock and Metal Revival. If you're interested in hearing full shows, go to our Facebook page and check out our list of affiliates for times and places where you can hear Rock and Metal Revival. Right there from Mind Crime 2, that's Queensryche, and I'm American on Rock and Metal Revival. And uh, man, it seems like forever yeah. since we spoke to this dude. I tell you, man, I remember him sitting in my front room playing guitar. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that was maybe the last time we talked to him. But uh, we want to welcome back to the show a friend of Rock and Metal Revival and a friend of ours, Mike Stone. How are you doing, partner? I'm doing great, Red, and it's great to talk to you guys. How you doing, Jerry? Doing good, doing real good. Really. <laughs> it's uh, it's been quite a while. I mean, uh, Jerry and I were talking about a year ago. We're like, you know, I wonder how Stone's doing. I wonder if he's still doing his jazz thing. And then all of a sudden, the news breaks that uh, a certain guitar player is back in a certain band. Mike, how did you get back into Queensryche? How did that all happen? <laughs> You know, life is just, you know, you know, those things at you sometimes. And, you know, it was one of those things. I had just moved across the country, my wife and I, and I'd been doing a jazz gig, you know, for the last, man, eight to ten years. That was my the main thing I was doing, which I really mm-hmm. enjoy. And um, I, we decided to, you know, move to the Southwest, and we did. And we were here for about a month, and... I uh, got to the point, you know, did a bunch of stuff around the new place and getting settled. And I, I said to, I said to Laura, I said, man, you know, I should probably get on it, start looking for some jazz gigs. She was also the bass player in the jazz band. Oh, nice. And, uh, and literally this was, we were here about a month and literally the next morning I got a call from Eddie Jackson seeing if I was available to do some shows. And I said, Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> and so I went and did a few shows, and and I've been doing it now for the last uh, since I mean since May I believe it was. So yeah, and it's been going great. So had you uh, kept up with with their music, the new albums and stuff, or or were you just oh, in yeah. your jazz thing? You know, I. I listened to a few things. I would, every time they had a new release, I'd check out a few tunes and just see where they were at. I mean, I, I always had a good relationship with the guys. So I, you know, it's always nice to see what your friends are doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously when, when I got the call to, you know, come back to the band and, and play, I, I, you know, dug in deeper. Oh yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I, I think their new records are great. <laughs> I do too, dude. We were, we were loving them. Yeah. We thought uh, Todd just brought a little different attitude to to the band, you know, and they they seemed happy. They seemed happy, you know, which is nice. You know, you want you want everybody to be be feeling good. So, oh, yes, I agreed. And and yeah, and the vibe has been just, you know, wonderful. Everyone is you know on top of their game. Everyone is, you know, super cool. Everyone, obviously, in Queensryche is a great player. And it's just, oh, yeah, it's. It's really fun to be a, a part of it. So now, Mike, you'd been out of Queensryche for um, what almost twelve years when they got the call back. Uh, what was it like walking in and playing with Whip again? It was, you know, uh, you know. I mean, let's say I love playing with Michael. I mean, he. Uh, I mean, Queensryche to me, one of the things I always loved about the band is the way it's you know sewn together guitar wise, and and I love like. Uh, dual guitar harmony type things and mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. And, to, you know, I, just the mechanics of Queensryche is cool. And then to play, you know, honestly, to, to play like dual leads and stuff with Michael Wilton, who to me is one of the Dude. greatest at it oh, yeah. on earth. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a blast. I mean, it feels great. You know, there's, it, there's a certain thing when you're, you know, dealing off like dual lead solos and harmony and it's locking in, and you're catching all the little nuances together, and it's it's mm-hmm. it's awesome. And to do that with Michael, I'm I'm you know I'm honored. So did the muscle memory kick in? You know, when you all of a sudden you start <laughs> start relearning <laughs> these tunes because you've been playing jazz stuff is a lot different than the Queen's Ark stuff. You know, you know, I would say you know it is a lot different. And however, you know, from playing jazz for a number of years oh, before yeah, coming you... back to the band. I, it gave me a whole new appreciation for the band, honestly. And nice. It wanted me to work you know, even that much harder to find the nuances because 
I, I could recognize them better, I guess you could say. Yeah. Nice. Now, now, Mike, are you still throwing the uh, Jolly Ranchers out in the crowd, or are you, you, you throwing your picks again? <laughs> you know, I've been back to picks. Okay. Uh, I've been back to picks. I caught yeah. one of those at, at the Chicago, one of the Chicago shows, man. You whipped it up into the balcony, man. I reached up, snagged it out of the air. It melted like four weeks later, dude. I tried to get <laughs> Sorry, it signed. Man. Tried to get it signed. <laughs> <laughs> and just to give anybody, you know, people some insight, there was a period of time where instead of throwing picks to the crowd, if you haven't figured it out by now, mm. I threw Jolly Ranchers, you know, because I thought, wow, a nice little treat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it's funny, though, after that, like, I did it for, like, a tour or two, and, uh, but, you know, the aftermath was, like, you know, people like yourself, I can't believe how many friends, like, randomly in the crowd got a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> yeah. um, there was a, 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 there was a, a guy named... Uh, named mark who worked for one of the companies i was working with at the time and you know, with endorsements and we had a show in new york and i, I think it was at the nokia uh, nokia center i can't remember what it's called but anyway mm-hmm. he was in the balcony apparently like during the show talking to somebody and i whipped one way up there and it hit him in the head <laughs> oh Man, nice. like, what are the odds of that? You know? <laughs> nice. Well, I know uh, at I mean, one at one time, Mike, I had some uh, fluorescent or see through green picks, and I asked you, I go, "You remember these?" And he goes, "I don't even have one of those." <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. when I moved, <laughs> when, I, when we moved, you know, we were in our house that we were in for yeah. over twenty years, and uh, I did find a few. I found ah, a few. Good. Nice. I nice. found a few treasures. <laughs> <laughs> so now. You were playing your your jazz. You're playing your Gretsch guitars, right? Is that what you were playing? It looked like I I saw a few pictures back. Well, uh, the big most, hollow hollow body guitars. You were playing the big mostly well. all big hollow bodies. I you know in in over the last several years with jazz, I've I've had and tried. I mean, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ab- about halfway into my jazz experience. I, I and I had heard of this this guy for years, but it had a, you know a, a profound effect on my guitar playing. I mean, I'd been doing the jazz gig for you know three to four years, I would say, and I was you know tuning out to like guys like Herb Ellis and Wes Montgomery, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know I'd heard the name for years, and but I saw this movie that uh, what was it called Sweden Low Down, and uh, and it was vaguely about this the world's second greatest guitarist and the greatest guitarist was this guy named Django Reinhardt. Oh yeah. yeah and, and I had really, I, all I really knew is oh, I've heard of this guy. I heard he had, you know, he had some problem with his hand or whatever. And mm-hmm. so I started really digging into Django Reinhardt and wow, that guy is, he's my favorite guitar player, period. Oh, and nice. uh, he, he played, I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting story. He lived from 1910 and to 1953. He, he died young. Wow. Um, and he was literally a gypsy in France. And he was in a fire when he was 10 years old. And his, his, on his left hand, his pinky finger and his ring finger next to it mm. were kind of like fused together and bent over. So he only had his thumb, yeah. his first and middle finger. Man. And, and he, and all I can say to anybody who's into guitar, find some old, old Django. And he was the original shredder. I mean, just peeling off stuff with these. Oh, I got really it. cool scales that I'm just like, oh my god, how did I miss this? I got <laughs> Now I got to check that out. Now I got to check Which that out. Which sent me on a, uh, you know, to get me into. This. So then I started really, you know, looking into like gypsy jazz guitars, and, and Django played a very specific guitar most of the time. Oh yeah, he had the oblong hole in it, kind of. Yeah, weird. it has a uh, petite bouche, is what it's called. Ah, it's okay. a small oval hole, and they're unique. Is uh, they're, they're, they're a very unique look to them. They also have a very long scale. Like most of them have a scale. It's like uh, mm-hmm. twenty, at least twenty six inches, which is yeah. which gives it a certain you know. Yeah, that's growl. long. That's a little bit longer. That's, that's long. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. and some of them are even I think uh, I can't remember the centimeters, but uh, it's it's a really cool sounding guitar. And, and Django also just to throw in there, a lot of guys, I didn't realize this at the time either, but he was one of the inventors of playing with distortion. And it was really? mainly because the amps at the time, you know, he started using the, you get these clip on pickups back in the late forties and there's little tiny amplifiers, maybe five, 10 Watts. 
Oh, and, yeah. and he would try to get louder and louder, and it started distorting. And that's where I think he was like the first guy to use like sustain nice. like from a oh, driven yeah. amp. Those would just hum and, uh, hum and hum and hum. And so, so it's uh, Django. So once I discovered Django, I guess to get back to answer your question about guitars, I really got into gypsy jazz guitars and really played those a lot for a couple of years huh. and then worked my way back to other things and then just keep mixing it up. And now you're playing, I saw a picture of Jackson Soloist, maybe, a wood, wood grained Jackson I saw you playing. Yeah, I've been playing a few Jacksons. I have a soloist and a, a dinky that I picked up, and uh, also a, a, a Gus G. Sandemus, which the, oh, the good okay. folks at Jackson had hooked me up with. And those have been my three main guitars for the year. They've been so you didn't killer. you didn't get rid of your other ones, did you? Because in Queens, like before, you had a bunch of flying V's, pointy cool guitar, pointy guitars, and stuff. I have a few things. I mean, when I moved, I did uh, liquidate a number of things. Ironically, ah. <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. I, I kept most of my jazz guitars. I kept, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, my favorite Strat, my favorite Les Paul, my favorite Gra You know, I kind yeah, of went yeah. through and picked my favorites. But I, you know, I, I was moving across country. I wanted to thin the herd. Yeah. And I and, uh, still got a couple things. But it was funny. Uh, when I did get the call, I looked at, you know, my guitar stable and went, I, I don't have any heavy metal guitars that I would want to use right now. <laughs> Man. Man. And uh, so I, uh, and then I've always, you know, I've always dig the Jacksons. And so I yeah. just picked up a few of those and I've been, you know, rocking out. Nice. Now, Mike, I, uh, we would do our listeners a disservice if we didn't say, what's up with the new Queensryche album, Mike? <laughs> 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 well, that's, uh, well, it's it's deep in production right now as we speak. Um, the guys started, man, the first week of, of of January and making a lot of progress. I have a, a, a number of things to play on the record, which I've been back at my place, and I have tracks that I'm going to be playing on, and I've been working up you know things for that, and I'm going to be cool. flying down to the studio uh, on this coming Monday cool. to go r record my parts which I'm very excited about. So when they called, how how tough of a decision was it to say, to hang up the, I mean, honestly, hang up the jazz stuff for a while? Or are you I mean, still going to do both? I mean, I guess I just, my, my jazz band is on hiatus, but the beautiful okay. thing about the jazz band is I I can do that when I'm 90. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's true, yeah. Yeah, that you know, and that's one of the reasons why I started doing it because it's something you can always come back to. It never goes out of style. Mm -hmm. um, it is. It's. It's. It's just something that I created that I have now that I can pull out when time permits. However, oh. it has been fun. You know, going back to you know the whole metal style. Yeah, I nice. mean they're different, but they definitely complement each other. Yeah, that's true. So, I'm expecting some jazzy scales on this new Queensryche album. I want to hear, hear, hear some crazy stuff. I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> well, it's, especially uh, seeing what you can do, Mike. I was promised, actually, uh, with, you know, I was kind of threatened to ask these next two questions. Oh, yeah. And okay. one is, when the hell are you going to do another Christmas album with probably the greatest Christmas singer of all time. Uh, yeah. Jim, yeah. Yeah, Jim Bob. <laughs> yeah. And he said, how the hell nothing, is... <laughs> nothing says Christmas like the Ripper. That's no. right. <laughs> I'm telling you, we played it. We, were, it, we play great. it every year at Christmas. Yeah, and actually, right. we're playing it on the hog up here <laughs> in Janesville on, uh, at Christmas time. But uh, Jim Bob, he's like, well, if Stone moved to Arizona, how are we going to do the second album? And I'm like, I don't know, Jim Bob. But, we'll do uh, it remotely now. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> And he, technology these yeah, days and he yeah. wants Smoke to know signals. and he wants to know why that's not on your discography on uh, wikipedia that was the <laughs> second question he wanted me to ask you yeah oh man i, uh, I, don't, I don't think i even realized that but uh, that's man. a disservice yeah yeah that was some classic stuff there, that man. was some classic stuff that, it, that that actually that there's that's a, a cool little record i mean the <laughs> ripper with banjo uh, yeah. yeah i just i mean how, what else can i say <laughs> I, I, it's kind of Mike. I'm telling you, everybody we play with that four goes. Are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, I think it's great. I love it. I think but, it could have used some cowbell though. 
That, that's that would have that would have that would have took it over yeah. the edge right there, man. That was Dave's responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, you know, Mike. Uh, you're, so is there uh, tour plans uh, for maybe this uh, spring and summer? Uh, we'd love to see you play again. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, we'll be uh, playing like crazy. I, uh, I I mean, the big. I guess uh, we're real excited. This first week of March, we are doing all of North America with Judas Priest. Yeah, nice. Uh, oh, really man. excited about that. I mean, one of my all-time favorite metal bands, and and what an honor! Oh yeah, you know, just uh, wow. I mean, I, I have to pinch myself. You know, it's great being back with the guys and 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 all that stuff. And but and then you know to be doing the priest tour, the metal which, god with the metal yeah, god uh, man. Yeah, that and, is and cool. It's really exciting and 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 definitely an honor. Oh, and you know, I I realized I never did answer your question with do of. Was it a hard decision as far as from the from doing the jazz thing to jump yeah. back in with the guys and and I, it wasn't hard in the sense that uh, uh, about a lot of people I don't know if they even realized but a couple of years ago I, I filled in on the entire Scorpions tour uh, we did like three weeks with the Scorpions oh yeah 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 and I, and I and I filled in at the last minute and it, it was a, a lot of fun and that was my first time out with the lineup as it is now and wow what a great time and. And I said to to Eddie Michael at the time, I said, if you ever need anybody, just call me. Nice. So I'm glad they did it. And, yeah. and, 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 and like I said, I was happy, happy to do yeah. it. Yeah. We're, I was happy to hear it because yeah, I always thought you two meshed really well, you know, as a dual yeah. guitar. Beast. Yeah. I love playing with whip. Yeah. He's, he's a lot of, he's, he's a, just a, a really fun guitar player to play with. <laughs> well, hey, now uh, we're going to, I know you're a busy guy and, and we appreciate you coming on the show. So I guess the question, we you've been on the show before and you, all, you know we always let the artist pick the song out of it. But the question today is, give us one of the songs from one of the, you know, the new lineup uh, that you really are digging right now and uh, and, and like. Hmm. Or that you think about that. Or that you get to play live yeah, now. Yeah, that you just love playing live. Uh, how about uh, Blood of the Levant? Oh, what cool a tune. great song. Cool tune. Mike Stone, you know you are always welcome uh, here. You're one of the family, and we appreciate you taking some time to talk to us today. Well, you know, thanks a lot, Red and, and Jerry, and it's always my pleasure to come and talk to you guys. Always. <laughs>